Right, so we're gonna have a, a right good shot. Oh, fucking hell, it's gone proper dark. Hello! <laughs> um, fucking turn that light, you knobhead. How many times have I had to do that? Fuck's sake, what a twat. Right. Welcome to the channel if you've never been here before. I'm a foul mouthed bastard. You'll get over it, or you won't, and you'll leave. I don't care which. Regardless, um, yes, a new engine design. So I literally, it's now Sunday. I thought of this on Tuesday, Wednesday. So as I do, because I'm a sad bastard, I was thinking about engines. It's all I fucking do think about. And I came up with this idea. Now this idea, I don't think is really viable. Maybe, maybe not. I haven't done enough. I haven't crunched the numbers. I haven't done enough, you know, looking into it. I haven't fucking done an analysis or anything but i thought it'd be cool to show you this design right in the early stages one of these days and it's one of them things again one of these days we'll get around to building this unless i come across something that really stops me like oh that won't work because of so on so this design is just an idea i was just throwing around i was sat around thinking about conrods <laughs> of all things I fucking love conrods. It's the shape. I have a conrod collection. I think it's in an earlier video where I show all them conrods and stuff. I have a conrod collection. Please don't send me your shitty conrods unless they are unique. And I mean unique if they're lovely. If you've got a H2R conrod, I'll fucking... Well, I'll just get the horn over that. But anyway, I love conrods. I just love the shape. Don't ask me why. It's a weird little fetish. But I was actually thinking about getting rid of conrods. And I thought, you know what? One of the big problems in engines is the conrod. What we have is we have two processes here. We have a piston that wants to go up and down like this. This is reciprocation. It's basically a linear repeat. So it linearly travels, then stops, then goes in a linear direction the other way. And then what we have, in, and then we have a crankshaft. And the crankshaft likes to do the absolute fucking opposite to that. Instead of a linear force, it, a linear, linear displacement, it wants to basically rotate around a central pivot. Oh, the fucking ghetto lads are here. Awesome. So it wants to pivot around, you know, a location. And the forces that are applied to these are different. This is just a linear acceleration. This is an angular acceleration. Um, and betwixt, <laughs> I've always wanted to say that, between these two is our beloved Conrod. Right. Our beloved Conrod with its big end and its small end. And I want to get rid of it. The reason why is Conrods are bastards. You see, some of these forces cause a lot of vibrations. Vibrations are bad because they waste energy they make things um especially with variable rpm the harmonics involved and stuff like that you can every time you have something variable it's fucking horrible if we could keep everything basically uh constant that would be absolutely fantastic but obviously this is not the way this is going to work so well, this is one of the benefits of cvts and stuff but anyway rod you're accelerating this piston up and down and you can balance that out and Porsche and Subaru and loads of other people, BMW included, have done this by sticking another piston in here, like this, in a boxer. And when this fucker goes up like this, uh, this one goes out like this. Sorry, I'm fucking having a brain fart, and vice versa. Yeah, so this balances it out and it basically punches out and pulls in. So them forces balance each other out. Lovely jubbly. Problem is, is they're not in the same plane, that's a bit of a pisser, but yeah, you, you, know, you can only do so much. Crankshafts are awesomely balanced as long as the weights are right, but you can quite easily rotationally balance pretty much fucking anything. It's lovely how you can basically balance a crankshaft and so on. The big knobhead in all of this is this. Now, actually talking about counterweights and stuff, so let's just slim down our crankshaft, our crankshaft like that. Let's just cut away these bits. Obviously, we have an asymmetry now to our mass distribution like this so our center of mass is more here it's not on the rotational axis but you can balance this out to balance the shafts or you basically just 
put two crankshaft webs out of plane. You do get a bit of a rocking moment there, but ah, fuck it, it'd be right. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean, you can balance these things out. For a single cylinder, you can quite easily balance this out with balancer shafts, or you just basically stick a weight on the other side. Which has been uh, very, very um, well executed with a wankle. They stick a counterweight on the end of that. And actually, that's one of the things we're going to go into, is how beautiful wankles are in theory. Um, especially if you use three lobes. That is just fucking wonderful. Any road. So I want to get rid of the conrod. And I was thinking, how the fucking hell do you get rid of a conrod? And that's where this idea popped up. So if we just look at a conrod, the problem, sorry, let's get back to the fucking problem and jumping far ahead. I'm far too excited because I love new designs. I love new, new ideas. If we look at a conrod, the problem with a conrod is, is that it traces out a weird shape. So your big, your small end goes up and down like this. And your big end goes roundy, roundy, roundy like this, right? All right, fair enough. We can balance out that, we can balance out that. The problem is, is this bloody fucking thing in the middle, the beam of the actual conrod. It's got a lot of mass here-ish, it's kicking out there, and then when it comes over here, it kicks out loads of mass fucking there. But if you look at where all these things are, when you draw out the center of mass for these things, it does this weird bloody circle thing that isn't exactly, um, it isn't circular, it's a fucking weird shape. And it's horrible, and they're horrible to balance out. There is one way you can balance out con rods, it's kind of like doing a straight fall. The only problem is, is you need every other rod in them matched pairs to counter rotate. Well, that's fucking nonsense, so they don't bother doing that, because that would be fucking horrible. Basically, every time you have a rod kick out, you have another rod come in. People are going to show me that DARPA engine from, what is it, where it had literally two crankshafts and two con rods that basically went that. Yeah, that'll balance out, but you've got two fucking crankshafts now, one piston. Fuck me. Now you've got silly weights all around. Although the crankshafts themselves do balance each other out because they're counter-rotating to each other. So it's quite nice in that respect. But it's a pain in the ass having two crankshafts. It really is. So let's get back to it. So I was thinking, how could you get rid of it? So let's just look at what a conrod is. A conrod, at the end of the day, is like a, a dog bone in your suspension. Right? This thing is under tensile stresses and compressive stresses so it's stretched and compressed now all we need to do is to have something else that can be compressed that isn't a fucking stupid shape <laughs> and doesn't track in a stupid motion what we need is we need something that can take compressive forces and turn them into rotational forces and this got me thinking why don't we just use oil why don't we just have a piston like this cross section of a piston in a cylinder and then just bottom our cylinder off like this and then just have a port at the bottom now the head of this can work in two ways four stroke is a bit complicated two stroke would be the easier way to do it but basically what happens is is you have fluid and you'll have piston ring seals here just like you normally do piston rings and then you could have a seal here for the oil. Now this seal would not be like hydraulic seals. This seal would be a push seal. So basically, there's your cylinder wall. And then you would have a seal, um, a seal like this, sorry, in a gap like that. And then the oil would bleed in and push that seal again. So the higher the pressure the oil, the higher the pressure that seal boots against this ledge and boots out and seals. How well that would work... Obviously, you're going to have a split in it. That's a pain in the ass, and it's going to proper shoot through that split. That's one of the design considerations that I have to work around. Like I said, this is all just fresh. But you apply a force down, bang, like that. This force goes bang, like that, and it basically compresses all this liquid, and this oil then shoots out. Now, I'd put little ports in here, which I did in my CAD design. I'll show you a picture of that now. So basically, all this oil can also piss down, and so on. And then... You don't have a crankshaft, you put the crankshaft somewhere else, and that's in a sense the beauty of this idea, and it is just an idea. There are millions of problems, I know, but I'm just showing you the very early stages. So now you have, basically, a port, basically a fucking pipe, from this cylinder arrangement over here, which is, a, like I say, it's got a hole in it, and it's got a piston that pushes down like that. And then you just have a hydraulic line. And then you could just have a crankshaft 
that has ramps like this and it has a bleed hole in here and then it has a hole out of it so this is the casing this is the casement and just say we've got a fucking fix in there like that so the oil comes in pushes against this ramp and pushes it around until the pistons are bottom dead center then the oil pisses out of here then what i do is put this oil through an oil cooler so it goes through an oil cooler comes out nice and cold and is fed back into the system you would have check valves so there's a check valve here so it's only when the pressure is great enough it'll push back that check valve and the same thing here or a weaker one well it would have to stop the reverse flow but what you've got here is the beauty of this system theoretically is you wouldn't really need coolant the oil itself would be the coolant it gets passed through an oil cooler the other thing is as well is this crankshaft the side walls so just say you have this crankshaft side on that's this rotational axis and this is this ramp and if you had more pistons you just add more and more of these ramps um, like that you know what i mean like that all the way around it what it means is you can move your crankshaft wherever you fucking want so you can have your piston arrangement just sat here with some hydraulic lines coming out of it and then just a crankshaft you could put it wherever you fucking wanted you could have cylinders pointing out like fucking porcupine spikes in every single direction it wouldn't matter each cylinder would be its own little separate entity or you could just string them together into whatever arrangement you want you could also change firing orders by literally uncoupling pressure lines and just plugging them in different ways you could do fucking what you wanted the whole point is, is it gives you this ability to move stuff around that you've never had before. But this crankshaft thing, you'd have seals here, bearings, and then you'd have seals. These would be high pressure seals, obviously, which is another problem. But basically, you could just allow some of the oil, just like a supercharger, in a sense, like a roots blower one, to just leak past and just lubricate everything because it's at high pressure. There would be wobbles in this pressure as the pistons fire, and you, you work all that out later, which is what I'm going to do. The other thing as well is, obviously, to seal this thing, you'd have uh, blade seals, just like you do with uh, air tools or superchargers. Some of the Roots Blower ones have blade seals, just like a wanker, like Apex seals, basically. And you just seal it like that, and away you rock and roll. Like I said, this is just an initial idea, but the beauty of it is, in a sense, is that you could get rid of you could even use, and I won't even call it that, we'll call it the Evans engine. Because you could use uh, ethylene glycol or propylene glycol. It has a high boiling temperature of 200 degrees, which is better than water. Um, you'd, I'd probably start off with hydraulic fluid and stuff like that. But um, the viscosity is, you know, it's higher than water, but it's quite low. And we use uh, ethylene glycols and glycol-based stuff for brake fluid, which is basically what this is. This is where this idea came from. You have a brake, um, a uh, brake piston, and you basically just stick in pressure behind it, and it moves it. This is the reverse of that. Instead of having a, a lever for it, you are basically pushing down your pistons and getting that to turn. In a sense, what is a it's it's like a hydraulic it's like a hydraulic motor basically now what rpm could these things go to the reason why we have this circulatory system like this where it goes past the check valve into this crank pushes this crank around and then when it has an escape port goes through an oil cooler and then the force of all this pushes this back and pushes the piston back up is because then we kind of stay away from cavitation as long as you have nice radii and everything instead of having the fluid been pushed and then sucked back as soon as you try and suck anything apart then you're going to get cavitation. Now you are going to get cavitation in a sense uh, when the piston is trying to go up, but the thing is, it's this pushing the piston up, not the piston sucking away from it. Now, there is other problems, <laughs> and this is, we'll get back to, this is the two-stroke, four-stroke thing. This system would actually work better, far better, with a two-stroke, ported, whichever way you wanted to do it. You could, you could attach a supercharger to this and do it that way if you wanted to, like a diesel or something. How will this ever cope at high RPM? Fuck knows, probably not very well. Um, but for low power, low, high torque, low power stuff like diesels, this would probably work absolutely fine. Well, we'll see when I do the analysis. But um, one of the problems is, is that when you have your blocked off cylinder like this, and you can have your bleed hole arrangements and whatever the way you want it, when you have your piston in here like so, the problem is with the four stroke design, so you get a bang, right? We have combustion, bang up here like that, pressure increases due to the temperature increase, got to say that because Dave Macaroni. Piston goes down like this and squirts that oil out, right? Now there are losses due to um, viscosity issues and stuff, that's why you'd use a very thin 
a hydraulic oil or maybe ethylene glycol or something like that. But basically the piston pushes down. Now one of the beautiful things about this is that you can channel all this, especially around the crankshaft. You can have multi-faceted multi ports and stuff. So that even when this is at the bottom of its stroke, this would actually be quite, it'd have a higher thermal efficiency because it's all down to how fast you can push that piston down. And the pressures are pretty much all, you know, conserved apart from the losses due to viscosity and stuff like that. The, the friction losses you know, down a duct. But the problem comes when after you've gone bang like this, right? Uh, you just make sure your timing, make sure this piston doesn't bottom out. If you really wanted to, you could put a spring in, which is what I was looking at, just to make sure that piston doesn't bottom out and fucking wreck everything. The problem is, is when you come to inject fuel, uh, it'd be through a different port, maybe at the side, sorry, we'll get rid of that. Fucking hellfire. The black is disgusting, look at it. So yeah, you, your fluid goes out this way and then you check valve opens and pushes the piston back up. The problem is there's nothing to stop the piston. So the piston could just go bang straight into your head and your valves and all the rest of it. That would be horrible. Um, but with a two stroke design, um, oh, sorry, let's go back to, so that's going back up for your exhaust stroke. Once the piston is at the top, there is nothing to force the piston to come down for the intake stroke. There's literally nothing. This fluid, is just going to the hydro lock, it's just going to stay there, it's not going to want to fuck off and like I said I want to stay away from um, I want to stay away from um, at sucking, you know, drawing fluid instead of anything because that's cavitation, that's horrible. So you'd have to have a two stroke design where basically every time it gets to the top it goes bang, so that pushes the fluid back down and then when you go back to the top the crank is pushing the fluid back up and pushing but that's under compression. So that's all good. That's kind of like how a standard engine works. And then uh, for any two stroke or four stroke, and then you get another bang. So this would really only work with a, a two stroke. The four stroke just wouldn't work. And basically you just put a cylinder on it just like a normal um, piston ported engine. And basically I'd use a night sleeve where you have ports down here, and then you just do that. So this would be a two stroke design. Um, just because you have that lull and that problem. Compression is fine because you push from the bottom the crank does the work it's drawing it back down for the intake stroke for a four stroke that wouldn't work um so you know shit happens but it would be just quite a good unique way of just making